into the mountain. Can you see it? Shall we tell her where to go? It's not far. Come on, look up. Just up there. Listen to us. That's it. You Shall we tell it. her where to go? Hmm. Shall we? Does she know which way to look? Does she know her way into the mountain? She's a good girl. Oh, isn't she? Look up. So clever. Did you miss us? Oh, she did. There's a door. You can do it. You can see it. Come on, so Go away. I'm not listening. tell you of a great hero named Sigurd, son of Sigmund, no less. Born after his father's death, Sigurd is cared for by the dwarf, Rain. But Rain does not love the boy. Instead, he plans to use him for his own ends. You see, Rain's father possessed a great treasure given to him by the gods. But Rain's brother, Fafnir, killed his father and took the gold all for himself. Fafner hid the treasure out on a heath and could not leave it. And from the evil in his heart, he turned into a dark creature. A dragon. Senua, it can smell your stink. What are you afraid of, Senua? How will you save Dillion if you are too much of a coward to step into the shadow? They can't stop me. Then do it. The beast is stalking you from the shadows. Your sword is useless here. to do. Your father wants them to go away, and he only hurts me to silence them. But he's gone now. But they always come back. He says I will die if I go with them. They say that I'm already dead. No, no they won't be with them. Stop! That's why they crawl through the walls. Don't do you them. see them? Do you see their faces? Help me! Help! Get me out of here! Don't go! Where has she gone? She's disappeared again. She shouldn't be here. She escaped the darkness. She, she took her own life to escape it. She can't remember when it started. When her mother lost her smile. Her eyes gazing past her towards a world she could not see. This is what happens if you reach for the underworld, he said. It was a lot to take in for a child. And the first time she felt 
the cold chill of fear. I don't talk much about her father, Zimbel. I suppose I just didn't want to risk upsetting her. But it doesn't matter now, does it? It's not gonna run out soon. She hasn't got much time. She's too slow. It's not going to burn out. The darkness will come again. She 
she has it. She did it. She's done it. Well done. This place, it reminds her of the isolating, suffocating darkness that she lived through as a young girl. Imprisoned in her room at night, the faces in the dark coming through the walls. She wants them, everyone can see them. I mean, that's what children say all the time, isn't it? That there are monsters in the dark. By the time she realized that only she could see them, her father, Zinbel, could see the monster in her. Rayan the Dwarf's sole desire is to possess this dragon's accursed treasure, and he uses Sigurd to reclaim it. He tells Sigurd the story of Fafnir's gold, and the good-hearted hero promises to slay the dragon if Rayan would forge a strong sword for him. Sigurd remembers that his father once possessed a sword given to him by Odin. Odin broke the sword to bring about Sigmund's death, but Sigurd's mother still has the pieces. And so Rayan reforges the famous sword. Sigurd uses the sword first to avenge his father, and then he and Rayan go in search of Fafnir. She escaped the darkness, that she's with the gods. But what if they lied? What if the darkness took her and trapped her here?
dragon Fafnir is so large and deadly that it would be impossible to kill him face to face. But each day, Fafnir crawls across the heath to find water. So Sigurd digs a pit in the dragon's path and lies in wait in it. When Fafnir slithers overhead, Sigurd sinks his sword into the dragon up to the hilt. Sigurd leaps from the pit, and Fafnir sees his killer. He warns Sigurd that the treasure will lead to his death, as he went to the death of all kings. Sigurd replies that death comes to all men, and every man would want to be wealthy until that day. And he takes the treasure. It's a trap. The beast is coming. Stupid little thing. I'm not going to 